everyone, welcome to Things Lucy Reads. I'm Luce and this is my November wrap up video. I also read four books last month that were not part of the readathon. The first one was a witchy Halloween y FF romance and it is Under Her Spell by Bridget Essex. That is a pen name. She also writes under the names Alora Bishop and Sarah Dima. I found that out early on and I was really excited because the book I've read by Sarah Dima was really good and I really liked it and I expected to like this one just as much. And um, unfortunately, no dice. It was, what I didn't realise at the time is that it's a collection of three smaller novellas. It's not a whole novel on its, in itself, it's three separate stories. But the summary given on Amazon was only for the first story, so when that was starting to be resolved around 90 pages, I was like, what the heck is going on here? And then it went off into two other stories, which I didn't actually enjoy as much as I enjoyed the first one. If the book had just been the first story, it would have been excellent. It was about finding the perfect place for you in the world, it was about overcoming injustice, it was about um, learning to accept people for who they were, not for what their ancestors did and that kind of thing, and it was just so good, it was really solid, and it would have been an easy five stars if that was the only story. I don't even remember what the middle story was, but the third one was Isabella, the main character, taking her girlfriend Emily to meet her friends. And I just... One of the friends in particular had um, a very averse reaction to Emily because she's like a skin changer, she can turn into a deer. And um, based on something that a changer had done to her when she was 15, she had a really bad reaction to Emily after knowing that Emily's village had cast her out and ostracized her for something her grandfather did, not something that she did, something her grandfather did. Even knowing this, the friends still reacted very badly and it was kind of like explained in the narrative and the whole thing was like fixed or whatever but I wasn't satisfied by that resolution and I thought that her reaction was a little bit over the top. And I just didn't feel like the last two stories were as solid as the first one. I didn't care about any of the extra characters. I didn't, I wasn't as invested in Emily and Isabella's relationship at that point because I didn't think it was as well written as it was in the first story. The fact that it wasn't what the summary said it was, and the fact that I expected more from Sarah Dima, and the fact that I just didn't care about the second two stories brought up down to, I think I gave this one uh, three and a half stars. I actually listened to the last hour of it on audiobook because I just didn't want to have to sit down and slog through reading it. I wanted to be able to listen to it and do my bullet journal or whatever, which is what I did. And when I was finished, I returned the audiobook because it was not worth 450. Or well, the audiobook was fine, it was just the subject matter that I didn't like. So unfortunately, that one was just a bust. And um, continuing with that theme, the next book that I read was Learning Curves by Kaylee Simkis. Um, I read both of these on Kindle Unlimited, just so you know. So I didn't actually pay for them, only the audiobook for the first one. Um, so this one has a fat lesbian Puerto Rican main character, and her love interest is asexual and has ADHD. This book is own voices for fat and asexual rep, and also for ADHD rep, I think. It was fine. I gave this one a three stars as well. Um, the, the relationship was fine, it built up in a way that was believable, I liked them together, I liked them separately as characters, the way um, the main character's Puerto Rican heritage was incorporated into the story was good, the discussions about ADHD and asexuality that were included in the story were also good, but ultimately where this fell down for me is that none of the conversations read like conversations people would actually have, they read like words you would read on a page. Like I was reading this and it didn't seem like things that people would actually say with their mouths, it was like what someone thinks people say and it's not what people say. And this is just a major pet peeve of mine, I don't like it when the dialogue is bad because like, don't you talk to people? And it just bugged me a lot. So. It was fine, like it was fine, there's nothing majorly wrong with it, I just hate bad dialogue and it could have been so good because everything else was fine, like it was fine. It was fine. The next book that I read was slightly better um, and it is Thankful by Edie Bryant who also writes MM fiction under the name Hayden Hunt. Um, this is a Thanksgiving set romance and this was very nearly like the one that redeemed all of FF for me but not quite. So the premise is that the main character's parents 
didn't tell her that they moved not only houses, not only towns, but entire states. And she comes home to visit them for Thanksgiving as a surprise and they're not there because they've moved to Florida. And even if she had known that they were in Florida, their condo is too small for her. So she couldn't have come and visit anyway. And like they were generally neglectful parents when she was young as well and they don't have a good relationship. So that was the thing. So Danielle, our main character, is at her childhood home and her parents aren't there and it's the and it's Thanksgiving Eve and she can't fly home because it's Thanksgiving Eve and she's wondering what to do when um, from across the street her childhood best friend slash secret crush comes over and says spend Thanksgiving at our house so she does that this book employed the only good way to write the miscommunication trope and that is the main character is a lesbian, has known for a long time that she's a lesbian, has come out to her best friend slash secret crush, and is secretly in love with her but doesn't tell her because she thinks that her best friend is straight. The best friend, on the other hand, is bisexual, uses the word on the page, that was great, is in love with the main character, but the main character didn't um, include a confession of love with her coming out, so she thinks that she's just not interested and she doesn't want to tell her that she's bisexual in case it makes things awkward. So one is in love with the other but thinks they're straight, the other one isn't actually straight but doesn't want to tell the other one because she thinks she's just not interested. Amazing! I love it. So this is all going on. They go to a bar and they get drunk and they shout their feelings at each other in the rain and they kiss and it's amazing. And then we get to Thanksgiving Day after the lunch and Elise, the love interest, gets this big bombshell dropped on her right before the person who says it has a major accident and has to go to hospital. And she starts to doubt how she feels about Danielle. She starts to doubt whether or not she wants to actually be with her. And then she's trying to deal with this major thing that's happening in her family. And she gets snappy at Danielle and you've got this, this suspense happening for about 40 pages. And then it all turns out fine in the end. And the resolution for Elise and Danielle about what had happened and how Elise had reacted to Danielle because of it was like five pages. And this was more than halfway through the book, after we've already had the confession of love, we've had the anatomically improbable sex scene, and it just felt like it was thrown in there to put some extra angst into a story that would have been perfect without it. And I didn't like it, because it just stretched on for so long, and then the resolution was so quick, and then the book ended, and then there was an epilogue flash forward into the future. And... I thought that was the postman, but it's not. And I... It, it it felt like the author was kind of like, oh no, there's not enough tension in this book, I need to throw in something else. Because lesbians can't have a happy ending, we can't just have a simple sweet happy ending, you know, that can't happen. Anyway, I, I gave it a 3.7 out of 5 because it would have been perfect if not for the whole thing with the accident and the hospital and the I don't know how I feel about you now kind of shit. So, um, it was good. I liked it much better than most of the other FF novels I've read and I don't want to stand here and be like, ah, oh, all FF is shit and or mediocre. It's just the ones that I've read have been either shit or mediocre. So um, if you have recommendations for good ones, feel free to leave them down below. I'm all ears. As long as you don't recommend me anything by Nell Stark, Claire Lydon or Harper Bliss because tried those, hate them. That's just the way the cookie crumbles. But anything else is fine. I'll give it a shot. So yeah, like this was fine except for this major thing which felt overwrought and unnecessary. So, yeah. And then the last book that I read this month was A Very Easy Five Stars and it is Fence Issue 12 by C.S. Picat, illustrated by Joanna the Mad. Um, I've given pretty much every issue of this five stars because it's just so great. I love all of the characters, I love their relationships with each other, I love the tension of it all. It's amazing. Like, it's really um, like over the top and dramatic and, and you get the facial expressions and everything and it's really great and I love it. The only thing that I'm kind of disappointed about is that this was originally going to be a limited series of six issues, then it was, or maybe five issues. Then it was monthly comics and we got to issue 12 and then they're like, oh, we're going to continue it further as graphic novels and that's great, except that this was going to be an extremely queer series and the main couple, I'm pretty sure, is going to be Nicholas and Seiji but it's been 12 issues and two extensions now and we don't even know for sure that either Nicholas or Seiji is queer. The only people who are canonically queer on the page are Aiden and Bobby. 
and for Bobby honestly that's just an assumption on my part because more often than not he dresses in pigtails and a skirt and you know that's fine that's great and I love him but it doesn't actually say whether he's genderqueer or or anything like that on the page maybe in the supplemental materials about the characters it does but I don't remember and I just am disappointed every time that we don't get a explicit confirmation of any character's queerness except for Aiden and I want to know when it's actually going to happen because this is actually killing me it's like the Poe Dameron comic all over again except this time I know for sure that it's coming and then it just never ever actually happens and I'm like how long are you gonna string me along like this I know that nearly everyone here is queer fucking tell me that they are you know but it's fine I still gave it five stars anyway I love this series with all my heart just like I love everything CS Picat writes with all my heart but yeah, just a little bit um, slightly disappointing that we only have one or maybe two queer characters out of a cast of at least a dozen so far. Like, just, just make it gay. Just make it gay, please God. You know? So, those were the seven books that I read in November. Um, if you are curious about statistics, which I have started tracking on my Bujo page just here, which I have... Um, unabashedly stolen from Books and Lala because she has the best bujo ever and I love it. Um, okay, so of the seven books that I read, three were queer and four were non-queer. Three were own voices in some way and four were not. Uh, six were written by a white author and only one was written by a non-white author. Um, that's terrible and I need to fix that. Unfortunately, it will not happen in December, but it's something that I'm going to work on. Um, I read five books written by women, one book written by a man, and one book written by a person who is non-binary. If you're curious, that is Fence. Um, C.S. Picat identifies as genderqueer, so there you go. Um, three of them I read as ebooks, three of them I read as physical books, and one I read mixed as an ebook as an audiobook, that was under her spell. Um, three were on my TBR, four were not on my TBR. I read seven and I bought 51, so. Let's just not talk about that. Yeah, so if you've read any of these, um, feel free to leave me a comment and let me know what you thought of them. If you have any recs for good FF romances, definitely leave me a comment and tell me what they are. Aside from the three authors I mentioned before, Claire Lydon, Harper Bliss, and Nell Stark. I will not read those again. Um, well, well, I lie. I'm going to give Claire Lydon another shot and maybe Harper Bliss, but Nell Stark? Uh-uh. Um, yeah, just feel free to leave me a comment about anything I've mentioned in this video or anything at all, really. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in my next one. Bye-bye.